Turn to your neighbor and tell them how good they look tonight. <laughs> neighbor, you look good. You too. What do you want me to massage? No, I thought you were good. <laughs> Make sure. All right. So the, uh, the last time that I was up here, last month, um, talked about opening the door for Jesus into our life, right? And uh, I brought a table up here, and I ended up flipping the table and knocking something over. I'm going to tell you today I'm not flipping any tables, but I'm still using one. Um, <laughs> with that being said, I, I <clears throat> I'm not going to jump into the message right away. What I would like to do is... Uh, Show my appreciation to everybody who helped uh, send the youth to AC last month um, by bringing up a couple people to talk about AC again. Um, so I have uh, two people who, who I was blessed to be there with, and I know, I know it changed their life. So one of my leaders, uh, Trevor, Trevor Worley, if you don't mind coming up, and Cassandra, I'm going to have uh, her come up as well. I'm going to have Cassandra go first, though. Ladies first. Ladies first, of course, yes. Okay, so AC was amazing. I just want to say that. Um, personally, my favorite part was, like, the fellowship that I got to have with, like, my whole youth group. Um, just on the ride there, we, like, we got to sing to lots of music, and it was really fun, and I, when we were on our way there, I wasn't fully sure how the weekend was going to go. I knew that, like, last time it was amazing, and I was kind of expecting a similar thing. And when I got there, it was completely different. Like, we had, first of all, the girls were in a completely different room. We got to go in glass elevators. So that was cool. And then the messages were very different. Um, the first one... The past, like the pastor, he ended up bringing up a fish on stage, and I was really confused. Like, the message was like, "Give me your fish," and so I was like, "Okay, why? Like, what's the fish?" And he like explained that your fish is like your problems or like your baggage, kind of, or at least that's what I got out of it, and. That was just amazing because, like, I have baggage. I'll say that. <laughs> but um, that night I gave him my fish, and um, the second night was, like, purity. And it was keeping, like, keeping yourself pure, not just, like, sexually and all that stuff, but there was more to it. And that night, af like... When we were at the end, he was speaking in tongues. And honestly, it kind of freaked me out. <laughs> but I tried it, and it was kind of cool. Still didn't really get it, but I was hearing other people that, like, I knew speaking in tongues, and I was like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. And that night was just amazing. But the one that really hit me was the morning before we were going to leave, and he was talking about prayer. And I've always kind of known that, like, prayer is supposed to be, like, a conversation. And so I kind of prayed, like, every once in a while when I remembered. But afterwards, we signed a vow to God. And it was basically a vow to keep doing all of the things that we learned throughout the weekend. And I signed the vow... And I've been praying a lot more since then, and I feel like I've gotten a lot closer to God. Literally every night, I'll just tell him about my day. And, like, if it's a bad day, I'll kind of rant to him about my day, but I'll thank him for the things that went well. And, like, if it's a good day, I'll thank him for all those things. And I just feel like I've gotten closer to God through that, like, through prayer. And, like, at the end of the vow that we signed, it said that we're going to make mistakes. We're going to fail. And I have failed multiple times. I didn't mean to. Um, but...
but I'm trying to keep that vow that I signed. And yes, I may fail. Everyone will fail. We're not perfect, but I'm trying and I'm getting better as I'm working on these things. So, yeah. All right, so my name's Trevor. I'm one of the youth leaders downstairs. I help out with the youth kids and keep them all in line. Um, <laughs> um, but I'm going to start not with this last AC, but the AC before that, the youth group's first AC. Um, last year, I was being tugged really hard to go by God, and I pushed it off, and I pushed it off, and I pushed it off. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go to this convention, and I didn't know why. Um, and I realized that after the convention was over, I missed something really badly. I missed out on something that I wanted to know. So this last AC, I went... And God really opened up my heart to a lot of things. Um, I'd always struggled with prayer. Um, I've never been the greatest communicator, period. But especially between my spiritual life and um, my spiritual life between God and I. Um, and he really opened it up for me and was like, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be formal. It doesn't have to be this specific drawn out thing you can just talk to me kind of like Cassandra said it's just a conversation between you and God and he really opened my eyes up to that um, the other thing he opened my eyes up to is I realized that I've been running for a long time from his plan um, and I've been running away kind of like Jonah in that he's been calling me to be more involved in the church and go through certain programs in the church and I think I'm ready to step up to that plate and he opened my eyes and that he showed me you should be a youth pastor you should be a you should be spreading the love that I have for these kids and showing them what I've done for you and what I can do for them um so he just really opened my eyes to that. And like Cassandra said, we all signed this vow at the end of AC. And I'll admit, I haven't, I failed. But we can't be perfect because we're not God. But through his grace, I've been able to keep that vow and, you know, really push towards that vow and be the man that I need to be for God. So that was my AC trip. Thank you, Trevor. That was awesome. Um, I, I don't, there's no other word for it. That's awesome. Um, but I, before I get into the message, I do have to share an announcement that before I forget, my mom will kill me if I don't do this. Uh, due to some unexpected health uh, back home, Jimmy and Jennifer Lane will not be performing at our first Community Connection Summer Concert. It's scheduled for next Saturday. Ethan Rogers, Pastor Jay's son, has agreed to come and fill in for them. Uh, Soulfire will be selling uh, burgers, hot dogs, and the coffee shop will be open with some new summer drinks. Um, she didn't tell me what they were, otherwise I'd let you know. <laughs> so make sure that you invite your friends and your family, and join us next Saturday at 6 p.m. for our evening of great entertainment and fantastic fellowship. And read your bulletin. All right. Get rid of that. It's taking up space. Well, you can print it off again. Anyways, so tonight, um, I really feel God is, as I don't want to call it a series because it was a month ago, but I know last month I talked about... Uh, opening the door for Christ, accepting Christ into your life. And uh, I actually have a photo. Johnny, I put it up there a little bit late. So it's, it's of what I'm holding right here. It's a glass globe, right? It's like a paperweight. It's really heavy, all right? So I'm just going to use it as, a, as a part of my demonstration. 
and uh, how when we accept Christ, we're supposed to be a light for him, right? I, I got these cool finger lights, and uh, I'm going to be using them. So Tonight's message is called The Light in the Dark. And then, why are you here, right? Well, that's a big question. Why am I here, God? Why, why did you bring me to this spot? In John eight twelve, it says, and Jesus spoke again to the people. He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. When I read this, I, I, don't, I don't just think of, of a light that necessarily physically shines, but my spiritual shine, right? So I, I'm going to put this in here, and, and I'm actually going to shut the light off. I don't think that helped. Can, can we get this first one shut off? All right. Can anybody still see? Do you see how that light shines up the, the glass globe? Right? One person can make a difference. Now, I, I, I handed out a, some lights to some people. If you guys don't mind turning them on and coming up here and just put them right in here. So when I read that, what I got out of it is when we accept Jesus into our lives, into our heart, when, when we open that door, we become the light in this world like Jesus is. Because to be Christian is to be Christ-like. So when we become the light, right, what are we supposed to do with it? We're supposed to light up the world. Now, you may think it, it didn't get brighter. To me, it's brighter, right? Matthew 28, 19. I got a lot of scripture tonight, guys, so I hope, uh, I hope you pay attention to this. Matthew 28, 19 through 20 says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Huh. I take this. Take this. Take this. You want to put that scripture back up, please? Take this scripture and run with it. Sounds, sounds easier said than done. Run with it. Take your light and shine. And everybody shines different. I know I do. When I, when I go to work, right, I, I don't necessarily force my, my, my Christianity or, or my beliefs on other people. But everybody at work knows I'm involved in church. They know I work with a youth group. They know who I am, and they always come and talk to me. So I'm able to open up in that way. There are some people who can just go up and be like, Jesus this, Jesus that, and I, I just, I'm not one of those people. I'm one of those people that I have to create a relationship with someone before I can really hit them hard. Does that make sense? So it's, it's pretty crazy that we're the light and we, we can shine and, and bring people to God. We're supposed to make disciples of all nations. But sometimes... Have that coffee cup up here. Sometimes when we accept God, right? When we accept Christ, we cover it up. At church, at church we let it shine, right? At church we let everybody here see that we have God. Here we have Jesus in our lives. But outside of here, we no longer have him. Yes, I know I do. But I don't really feel like showing it. When I go to work, when I go to school, to my family, to my friends, we hide it. Sometimes I'm there. When I go to, to family reunions and stuff, I sometimes, they know I go to church, they know I'm, 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 I'm involved, they know I work with the youth, but my actions don't speak that. They know that I'm supposed to be this, this Christian, and, and I would say about five years ago when my, my aunt was really into our life, into our life, uh, she used to always say, well, that's not very Christian-like. Well, that's not very Christian-like. What's Christian-like? Well, it's like Christ, right? She was, she was right, but she rubbed it in my face or, or 
my face the wrong way. That's not very Christian. Like, why are you acting this way when you're supposed to be a Christian? That's because I was hiding it sometimes. So I'm going to keep this one hidden for a couple minutes. Why do we accept Christ then we hide from him? Hide, the, hide him from the world in our life. Why? In Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people put, light up a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and give it and it gives light to everyone in its house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Story time. My, uh, last time I was up here, I told a lot of stories about my mom and, and my brothers. And uh, let's just say afterwards, got an earful from my mom. <laughs> But tonight, I, I want to talk about my dad. Um, not my stepdad, who I talked about last time, but my dad. My dad lives in Minnesota. Um, I have a, a half-sister who lives in Minnesota as well, but my dad. My dad claims to be Catholic, but he hasn't stepped foot in a church in years. Um, my dad is an alcoholic. My dad is a liar. There's one thing my dad, though, isn't, or that he is, as well, as he loves his kids. I'll say that. Every time I talk about my dad, I say, I love my dad, but I don't want to hang out with him. I love my dad, but he's a drunk. When I'm, when I'm there, there's always a fight. I said family reunions, I don't, I don't really show my light and part of it is because of who my dad is and, and what drinking does to my, my dad's side of the family. Turns them into monsters. You know, my, my dad, uh, one family reunion, was engaged to this lady and she took her ring off. They went to a bar across the lake and she took her ring off because it was hurting her finger and he was drunk and he got really mad and he started yelling, the bartender kicked him out, and he drove back. This is lake, you know, gravel road, super dark, and he's, he's wasted. And he gets to the cabin, and I'm the oldest one awake who's there. And I tell him, you know, we're, we're, we're arguing because I don't want him to drive back because he wants to drive back and get into this big fight and argument. So then he, he ends up driving back. I can't stop him. And I, I get in my vehicle, and I follow him. And when I'm following him, you know, I make sure he gets there safe. We get out of the vehicle. He runs inside, and he starts fighting again, you know? It's, it's, it's not a cool thing. And then he gets out, and I, I start yelling at him, give me your keys. He says no, and, and he just drives off again. You know, my dad's not a big guy, but he's it's my dad. I was afraid of him. You know, I was, what, 22 at the time? I was afraid of him. And uh, so he gets in the vehicle, and I follow him back, and it's quiet. I'm sitting by the fire. He's in his tent. And then the rest of the, the older family comes in and comes back from the bar. And the one thing you hear is my dad screaming. Uh, it's language that you guys don't need to hear. And myself, my older brother, and a couple of his cousins hear this. And we all make our way. And, and, and I'm the one there first. And the first thing I see is my dad going to choke his fiance. And I, I hit his hands down. And my older brother tackles him to the ground. Now, we're sitting there, and, and my dad's drunk. He's, he's yelling. He's, he's on the ground, and, and I'm kneeling next to him. I got one of his arms, and I'm, I'm yelling at him. I'm like, Dad, you're fighting your kids. I said, do you not see what you're doing? You're fighting your kids. It wasn't until probably the fourth or fifth time of yelling at his face that you're fighting your kids that he understood what he was doing. And long story short there, they, they made up whatever. A few years later, another family reunion, different lady, um, different fiance actually. Uh, same type of thing, except for this time it wasn't an argument that started with her. 
It was an argument that started with his brother over who's the strongest superhero. No joke. My uncle was saying it was SpongeBob because he can have that pencil and he can do whatever he wants. And my, my dad just had enough and they got into this big fight, which led to, to more arguing and him yelling at my brother's pregnant girlfriend at the time. And that was when I, I, I decided to tell him how I felt. And he compared me to my mom. And I took that as a compliment. And I, <laughs> I fought him on it. Like, we didn't, we didn't physically fight, but arguments. Through, you know, it's dark out. We're just yelling. There's people sleeping. And, uh, you know, they ended up splitting. She was, she was toxic to him as well as he was to her. But they end up splitting, and he ends up now engaged again. I, I know this is like a four-year span, guys. He, he's engaged again, and he called me the other day uh, about two weeks ago on a Wednesday night. And, and Wednesday night, if you guys don't know, I have, I have youth group, so I'm up there working the sound, and my dad calls me, and I tell him I can't talk. He goes, I really need to talk right now. I said, okay, well, give me a few minutes, and I'll call you back. And I sit down in the media room, and I'm talking to him, and, and I'm able to share the love of Christ with him. Yes, he may not have taken it fully, but I was able to speak into his life. I was able to, to give him positivity through Christ. And it, it, I haven't talked to him since because when I talk to him, it's all about him. You know, when I call him, it's all about him. But when he calls me, that's when he really wants to talk. I haven't talked to him since. But I know God's working in my life to work in his life. I can be that light. I need just to learn not to cover it when I'm around the, that side of the family. When I, when I talk with him, I now tell him how I really feel. I now can speak Christ into his life. I know he calls my mom on a, on a, a weird basis ever so often, and uh, just he asks her for prayer, you know. There are people in his life, yes, he, he, the one thing they have in common now is, is the three boys. So when he calls her, I know there's something there. And I pray for him, and I, and I ask God to work in his life. He just needs to take that step of faith and open that door to allow God into his life so he can shine, so he can be that, that light to my brothers as well as myself and my mom and my grandparents and, and everybody who is in their life who goes to church and, and believes and, and follows what God tells them to do. Now, it's not easy being a Christian, right, guys? Let's, let's, be, let's be honest. Uh, when, when we're told, when we're not told, sorry, when we're, when we're asked if we want to accept Christ, we think it's going to be this, this wonderful you know, thing that we're never going to get persecuted, we're never going to get yelled at, we're never going to have to shine, or never, we're never going to have to hide our light. But in Matthew 10, it says this. You will be hated by everyone because of me. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Amen. Show that picture of standing firm, please. It's just a couple boot prints. With, well, didn't fit right, but that's okay. It says stand firm. It doesn't say fall down. It, too often are we being persecuted, then we start to crumble, right? We, we see this, this light, right? We see this light and the world starts pushing us, right? The world starts pushing us down and it breaks our light. That's what we feel. We feel it. We feel it crush, right? We, we, instead of hiding it sometimes, we, we try to shine, but we, we get crushed, right? That's where... Allowing God to work in our lives. He, he just needs to, he needs to work in our lives. He needs to put everything back together. We need to re-accept him. We need to re-ask him into our lives. We need to have him reignite the fire inside of us. For all of you, I didn't put it back together. I just had another light up here. <laughs> I'm not a magician, guys.
allowing him to reignite the fire in us. The thing I take from Matthew 10, 22 is stand firm. Not that you'll be hated by everyone because of me, but stand firm. We stand firm in Christ. We don't, we don't crumble when the smallest thing hits us. Yes, I, I, I have a glass globe, right? And this thing is pretty heavy. I have a glass globe. But if we're all there together, if we're all lighting up the world together, this can't crush through this. If we surround ourselves with faithful people, if we surround ourselves with sometimes brighter lights, they can help us. They can lift us up. They can help God rebuild us. Maybe they're in our life to rebuild us. Maybe God has, has led you here tonight to meet someone to have, help you be rebuilt because we've all gone through something. I've shared stories up here a couple times, right? You guys know that I have some sort of daddy issues. <laughs> I have some sort of mommy issues sometimes too. I have, I have suicide in my family. I have, I have a lot of things that I'm using as a leader of soul fire to pour back into these kids who are going through the same things. I know, I know almost everybody in the youth group very well. I know a lot of them have daddy and mommy issues. I know a lot of them have depression in their life. Depression leads to things, and, and it's not good. Guys, I, depression leads to suicide. Not in everybody, but in the case of my stepdad, it did. So it allows me to, to speak life into their life, and, and <laughs> I do have daddy issues. But I'm learning to stand up to my dad. I'm learning to speak into his life. I'm learning to, to show Christ through him. Yes, I still call my brothers and, and complain about my dad. Yes, I still call my mom and say, oh, dad's going to call you in 10 minutes. You be ready. I, I still call because I need that support system from my brothers. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. So this, this crushed light that I have up here, that's not what God promised us. God didn't promise us a, 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 a life that's crumbling and, and full of sorrow. He promised us a future. He promised not to harm us. Yes, we're going to go through things, but that's to bring us closer to God. We need to realize that. Because if we don't realize that, we're going to stay broken. We're going to stay in the shadows. We're going to stay in the darkness. I don't know about you guys. When I was younger, I was afraid of the dark. Well, that's because my mom made me watch scary movies, but that's, that's besides the point. I love being up here, guys, because... My mom can't yell at me when I'm on stage. <laughs> but I'll get it afterwards. I know it. <laughs> We're going to read Matthew 28, 19 through 20 one more time. Because God doesn't say, hey, if you want to do this, he commands us. You guys know what a command is, right? The youth know what it is. I command them every Wednesday. I tell them how it is. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the end of the ages. I have commanded you. God commands us to go out into all the nations. You know, when I first started going to church, I thought of missionary work as, well, you got to go to, to Africa or Europe or, or Asia or, or, you know, Australia or 
South America, or you guys understand. I never realized that that meant the United States. I never realized that that meant going into the, the backyards of Fond du Lac or even to the youth groups of Fond du Lac and pouring into kids. I never realized that making disciples of all nations were my friends and my neighbors and my family. I've learned that over the years, but when I was younger, I never realized that. So my challenge for you tonight is to shine bright for God and do what he asks of us. Now, next week is the Community Connection Night, right? It's our, our first, um, uh, whatever that's called. Yes, concert. That's what it is. Our first concert. And my challenge for you tonight is to invite one person. Now, if they say no, they say no. But invite. I have a, I'm a, I'm a supervisor at Walmart. I have about 15 people who work under me, and I'm able to, you know, lead them. I don't, I don't manage them. I lead them. I work beside them. I teach them. I'm, uh, I'm there for them if they have questions, if they need answers. Um, I have this girl I work with. She's 19. And recently, uh, she's kind of fallen away. She, she just started going to church. Um, actually, she went to Bible, a Bible study, and she just she got hooked. You know, and, and, and it's not here, it's, it's somewhere, somewhere, wherever. But uh, she was going to this Bible uh, study, and something happened. She got turned away somehow, and, and I could see that. She didn't even have to say anything. I could just see that she had some issues in that area. And I, I said, walked up to her, and I said, uh, I normally don't do this because, you know, people just say no. But I want to invite you to church. I looked at her and said, you can tell me no, but I'm going to be back next week when you come back to work and I'm going to ask you again. And I'm going to ask you again. And I'm going to ask you until you say yes. And even then, I'm still going to ask you. And every week I ask her, I've been asking her for probably two months now, and uh, I always, uh, she always gives me this look like I'm just not ready. I have all these questions and they're just not being answered. And I, and I, try, I do my best to share with her the answers that I know that, that God has laid in my heart and that what the Bible says, but... She's too smart for her own good in some areas. She doesn't have strong faith, you know. But I'm going to keep asking her. So just because someone says no doesn't mean you should stop asking. Tonight, it's not about me. It's not about them. It's about you and your walk. It's about you and, and the light that you can shine in this world. Together, nothing is impossible, right? With God, nothing is impossible. We need God in our lives. We need him to light our hearts. Let Psalms 119, 105 through 112 be our prayer tonight. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it, and I will follow your righteous laws. I have suffered much. Preserve my life, Lord, according to your word. Accept, Lord, the willing praise from my mouth and teach me your laws. Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your laws. The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. Let's close our eyes, God. Wheatley, we pray tonight, Lord, that, that you move in our hearts, Lord. God, we pray that these words don't just fall on deaf ears, Lord, that you, you work in our hearts, God. And I pray as that we, when we leave here tonight, Lord, that we don't cover ourselves up. We don't cover our, our light shining you, Lord. God, I pray when we go out into the world, when we go out into the darkness of this world, God, 
You give us the strength. You give us the courage. You give us the, the willingness to, to shine for you, God. God, with you, there's no failing. God, with you, you can move mountains. Sometimes all we have to do is just say, Jesus. God, we thank you for, for this weather, Lord. Yes, it may be raining, but God, we thank you for that. God, I pray when everybody goes home tonight, Lord, that you just get them home safe. That you put a hedge of protection over everybody here and everybody who wasn't able to make it, Lord, and over Pastor Jay and Annette as they're not here this weekend, God, that you just, you're with them. That you're protecting them, bringing them back to us. God, I'm thankful for, for the youth group, God, that you've, you've allowed me to, to pour into so many lives, Lord. That you've allowed them to pour into me, God. God, I thank you for, for the leaders in this church, Lord, the, from the elders to the youth leaders to the leaders downstairs running children's church, Lord. Thank you for their willingness to serve and be a light to the people in those ministries. God, I pray, pray this in all your name. Amen.